whenever I finish a piece of work, I fly to the theater or go fishing in the hopes of resting, of forgetting myself. But no, a new subject is already turning like a heavy iron ball to my brain and some invisible force drags me to my table and I must make haste and write and write and so on and so on and forever and ever. I get no rest from myself. I feel like I am devouring my own life. That for the honey which I give the unknown mouths out in the void, I rob my choicest flowers of their, of their pollen. I pluck the flowers themselves and then trample on their roots. Surely I must be mad. Surely my friends and acquaintances do not treat me as they would treat a sane man. What are you writing at now? What are we going to get next? And so it goes on and on until I feel as if my friend's interest, their praise and admiration is all a deception. They are deceiving me as one would deceive a sick man. And I'm afraid that one day they're going to seize on me from behind and steal me and carry me out like Perpichkin. In the old days, in my best young days, when I was beginning writer, my work was continual torture. Uh, an unimportant writer, especially when things aren't going well for him, feels that his work is strained. It, it's awkward, superfluous, and clumsy. His nerves are strained and tormented, and he has nowhere to go but to hover amongst those involved in art and literature unnoticed, unrecognized, afraid to look men frankly in the eye like, like a passionate gambler who, who hasn't got the money to play with. The reader who I haven't met has presented himself to my imagination as being unfriendly and mistrustful. I, I was terrified of the public, afraid of them. I, I began to see the the dark ones in the audience as, as hostile and the, the fair ones to be cold, coldly indifferent. <sighs> what torture it was, what agony I was in. Yes, it's, it's, it's a good feeling to be writing and, and it's a pleasurable to be looking at the, at the scripts as well. But as soon as the thing is published, my heart sinks and I'm, I feel that I ought not have written it at all. And then I'm angry with myself and I feel horrible. The public who sees it, they say, how charming, how clever. It, it's, it's, he's a charming writer, but not a patch on Tolstoy. What a delightful story, but not so good as Tregenev's fathers and sons. And so it goes until my dying day. So it goes until my dying day. I, my writings will always be charming and clever. Charming and clever, but nothing more. And when I'm gone, my Friends will pass my grave and say, Here lies Dragorin. He was a charming writer, but not so good as Dragenev. <laughs>